homeostasis is something really important that your body does. Um, and we're going to talk just briefly about how your body maintains homeostasis. And this will come up again when we're talking about the nervous system. The word homeostasis basically means stand still. Okay? And that doesn't mean that your body would prefer to just be exactly in the same position all the time. But it does want to maintain a relatively constant internal environment. Okay? Probably the easiest example to understand is your body temperature which you know for humans should be somewhere around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. Um, so we'll look at a more detailed example of that in a moment. You know, things like your heart rate. Your body likes to maintain your heart rate around the same. It goes up if you're exercising. We'll talk about why. But then it goes back down. Even the pH of your blood, if it's acidic or basic, that's something that's maintained constantly. So let's talk about how that happens. Homeostasis is maintained by a negative feedback loop. Okay, so very common. Um, and what happens is that the pathway, okay, so thinking about all of these reactions that occur in your body, that's a whole pathway, it regulates itself. So it monitors itself by shutting off, okay, that's known as inhibiting the beginning of the pathway when certain events happen. So let's learn an example. Um, if you have an increased body temperature. All right, so up here at the beginning, something happens to disrupt homeostasis in this, for example, your body temperature. So let's think, you know, maybe you had phys ed and you had to run a mile and you're really warm, okay? So there are temperature receptors on your skin. Your skin has so many functions, including figuring out if you're warm or cold. Um, sends a message to your control center, which is your brain. Um, and then your brain, okay, it's part of your nervous system, is going to respond to that stimulus, okay, that increase in body temperature. So if you think about, you know, what happens when you've been running a mile, sorry for my dog in the background, um, you're going to start sweating, okay, sweating helps to cool you down. You're going to, um, and some people more so than others, you might get really flush in the face because blood vessels just under your skin are dilating to help cool you off. So these things happen. What that does is it causes a decrease in your body temperature. So those cause your body temperature to go down and that sends a signal back to your nervous um, system, right? That everything's back to normal. So therefore it has inhibited, so it'll inhibit that response of sweating and dilated blood vessels. So that's why you don't continue to sweat for hours and hours. Um, it's just once your body gets back to normal. A lot of times people wonder, okay, if we can have a negative feedback loop shutting off the pathway, can we also have a positive feedback loop? We can. It's pretty much the opposite of homeostasis. Um, it's when the original stimulus gets enhanced, gets turned up. And you can imagine most of the time we wouldn't want this to happen. You wouldn't want, you know, your body temperature to go up and that cause your body temperature to keep going up. That would be bad. Um, best example of when this happens is when a woman is in active labor and she's going to be delivering a baby. Basically what happens in a positive feedback loop is every contraction that a woman has causes, sends a message back saying, all right, let's, to the hypothalamus, which is part of your brain, saying, and then to the pituitary, release more of this hormone, oxytocin, which is going to cause a stronger contraction, which causes a stronger contraction, and so on, and so on, and so on. And that happens until, voila, you get a brand new baby. Unfortunately, your body cannot always maintain homeostasis, and a lot of times when homeostasis gets disrupted for an extended period of time, that's what can lead to a disease or a disorder. And diseases and disorders come into two categories, acute and chronic. Acute um, is going to, uh, an acute disease affects someone for a very short period of time, and so it's typically temporary. One example would be acute hypertension. Hypertension, right? High blood pressure. That's what acute hypertension is, like when you go into circulatory shock. So, you know, if you get scared, something scary, scary happened, and your heart rate goes up, and your blood pressure increases but that's acute, it's temporary, it will go away, um, versus 
chronic hypertension, okay, which is going to remain for a long time and oftentimes it gets worse. So people who have chronic hypertension or kind of constant high blood pressure due to, you know, it could be genetics, it could be dietary things, all sorts, they might take medication, um, exercise, things like that, but it's not something that's just going to get better. Um, another example of a chronic condition that results from a kind of disruption of homeostasis is arthritis. So we'll talk a little bit more about diseases and disorders and how they're related to the different body systems next.